Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. I got a request from my good friend Jonathan the Reviewer to talk about E.T., the extraterrestrial. Now, I'm sure there isn't a movie lover anywhere who doesn't know about E.T., because this is a true classic. And I think we can all agree that this is one of Spielberg's greatest films. For those of you who haven't seen it, and I'm pretty sure there isn't someone who hasn't, it goes like this. A small team of aliens come to Earth. Meanwhile, government agents realize that aliens have landed and try to capture them. So the aliens flee. Unfortunately, one is left behind. That alien is found by a young boy named Elliot, who names him E.T., which is short for extraterrestrial. Elliot brings E.T. home, where he introduces E.T. to his older brother Mike and his younger sister Gertie. They befriend him, they learn to communicate with him, and they learn that E.T. has some incredible abilities. There's a moment where Elliot starts to realize that E.T. and him are connected in some way. Because when E.T.'s at home watching a movie, while Elliot is at school, he ends up doing exactly what E.T. is watching in the movie. And he somehow ends up getting drunk, even though he never had a beer. But E.T. did. E.T. also has another ability to make his finger glow, which he uses to heal wounds. Elliot and Mike know that E.T. cannot stay here. He doesn't belong here on Earth. Plus, he misses his family. So they try to find a way to have him call home. Which is what leads to probably the most famous line in movie history. And that would be this. E.T. Home phone. They gather up a whole bunch of electronics that they can use, and E.T. puts them together to create a satellite dish that he could communicate back to the ship. But of course, they can't have it on the roof or anything, so they go to the woods. And here is where we find the most magical thing that E.T. can do. He can actually make Elliot fly on his bicycle. Elliot and E.T. set up their satellite dish, and they make their little phone call. They stay out all night waiting for them to come and get E.T., and unfortunately, they both get deadly sick from it. And after a short time, government agents invade the house. They put it under quarantine, and they do everything they can to keep Elliot and E.T. alive. Meanwhile, one of the government agents, who seems to be in charge of the whole project, he's asking Elliot what he learned about E.T. while he was with him. Obviously because of research purposes, because here, this kid has had contact with an alien life form, and, you know, this is too big to ignore. So, of course, he had to ask him every question he could think of. And sadly, a short time later, E.T. dies. The agent lets Elliot say goodbye to E.T. because, well, obviously he became like a real friend to him. And it's at this moment that Elliot realizes E.T. is alive because the ship got the call and they're coming right now to pick him up. And after an incredible escape that was orchestrated by Elliot, Mike, and Mike's friends, they managed to get E.T. to the rendezvous point and he goes home. It is truly a great movie, a heartfelt story that has stood the test of time. Just like with Jurassic Park, Spielberg really outdid himself when he made this movie. Because when it came out, it won the hearts of millions of families. And why not? E.T. wasn't a dangerous alien like you see in all the other movies. He was just a poor little alien that was stranded here on Earth and just wanted to go back home. And of course, with his ability to make kids fly on their bicycles and to heal wounds, he was downright magical for a little alien. Of course, story only gets you so far. What really made this movie was definitely the cast. Henry Thomas plays Elliot, and I know everybody remembers that Gertie was played by the legendary Drew Barrymore. The rest of the cast lend a lot to the story as well, but not as much as Elliot and Gertie, because they are the two main focus points. Michael's a big part of it, but he really comes into his own right during the big chase scene. But there is one cast member who sadly never got the real credit she deserved, and that was Pat Welsh. She was the voice to E.T., and she was perfect. Why she didn't get any credit in this, I couldn't tell you but I do know why she was chosen. It was because of her raspy voice, because by that time, she was a chain smoker. So, of course, her throat was pretty much wrecked. Spielberg thought that would give E.T. a unique voice, especially given the way that he looked. And without a doubt, he made the right choice, because E.T.'s voice is one of the most iconic things about it. That and the legendary scene where he and Elliot are on that bicycle flying past the moon. In fact, that scene is so legendary that it was used as the logo for Amblin Entertainment for over 20 years. E.T. became such a huge success that Spielberg was already considering making a sequel for it. And as most people know, a video game came out of it as well for the Atari. 
Now, we all know what happened for the Atari game. It was a disaster. Everybody hated it. In fact, it's so hated, it is regarded as the worst video game ever made. So what about the sequel? Well, as we all know, it never came around. In fact, there was a time nobody knew that they were even thinking of making a sequel. Then when the internet came around, people started to learn that there was a planned sequel. From what I've been able to research, it never got very far. Pretty much the furthest they got was to try to figure out where they wanted to take the story. And they had two possibilities. The first one was that E.T. just comes back. And the second one was that Elliot gets kidnapped by some evil aliens and E.T. has to save him. And after a short period of time of kicking that around, Spielberg came to his senses and pulled the plug on it immediately. And it's a good thing he did, too, because let's get real. There's no way it would have worked having E.T. try to take on evil aliens. It would have been very contradicting to the story as well as the character. And as for him coming back, I don't see how they could have made that work. Because you would have to have some scenarios going on, and plus, you know, you'd have to have a little conflict and things like that. Probably government agents again. But, you know, it would have been a simple, been there, already did that. You're just repeating yourself. So, yeah, it wouldn't have worked. And besides, there are some movies that are best left alone as a single, solitary movie. This is one of them. So thank God Spielberg came to his senses and decided not to go through with the sequel after all. But, in 2019, there was a little something involving E.T. that came up. And I will be talking about that next week. If you've never seen E.T., and I highly doubt you haven't, look this movie up. Believe me, you are gonna love it. And if you've already seen it, then watch it again. Because it is still just as good now as it was then. This is Movie Fan, signing off.